As established on the previous episode of Combat, it's important to understand how to control the parameters of a fight by manipulating the movement of your character and enemy mobs. This episode will go into more details about mobbing, leashing, and other related techniques that will help you control the parameters of a fight to ease combat. Stalling is an aspect of mobbing. Simply put, it's when you stop and allow the enemy to attack you. The purpose of stalling is to let a mob catch up to you and force it into attack delay. The mob will pause in place to attack and won't be able to perform another attack for a short period. While this may seem like a trivial thing to point out, stalling is very important against many mobs you'll encounter in the game. And of course, it's also a fundamental aspect of leashing, the act of keeping the mob interested in you through attacks. Most mobs will remain interested in you as long as it keeps attacking you. Stalling, like the name suggests, is also good for stalling for time, letting faraway mobs catch up to the pack, or allowing your followers to strike. If you're a player who likes to use pigs as followers, this can be really useful. There are some mobs in the game that move very quickly and stick to you like glue. A good example is the Hound. Pigs are unable to keep up with Hounds under normal conditions, but when you stall, they'll be able to catch up and strike the Hounds. Blocking is a collision-based technique that allows you to control the movement of mobs better. The goal is to prevent the mob from attacking you by using another mob to block it. In previous episodes, there have been clips that showed me utilizing blocking when isolating beefalo from their herds, making sure that only one of them attacks so that only that one leashes onto me while the others are blocked from attacking and will eventually diagram. In this episode, I'll showcase how to use blocking while kiting. One of the best uses of blocking is when fighting two terror beaks. For newer players, a single terror beak is already quite scary and can be fatal. Two can be a nightmare. However, with blocking, you can make the fight a lot easier. Angle yourself in a way where the two terror beaks are lined up next to each other, one after another. Make sure the front terror beak is directly in front of the back terror beak. When you notice the back terror beak slowing down and moving sluggishly because the front terror beak isn't giving it enough space, that's when you should engage. Like with all shadow creatures, allow the front terror beak to attack first, putting it into attack delay before striking it back. After attacking the terror beak, it'll teleport and you'll be in attack delay. During your attack delay, the second terror beak will try to path towards you, but because the front terror beak paused in place to attack, the back terror beak will be at least one terror beak's length away from you due to being blocked, allowing you to recover from your attack delay while the second one is still out of range. The AI in the game is not smart enough to compensate for blocking, so instead of pathing around its friend to reach you, the back terror beak will just bump into the front one harmlessly until it teleports away. Rinse and repeat this process until they both die. It is possible for the back terror beak to attack you if it's too close, so make sure the second one is fully blocked behind the first one before engaging so you have enough time to recover from your attack delay. You can utilize stalling to check if the block is complete. Like most techniques that require some mechanics, properly utilizing blocking in this scenario may take some practice. Blocking can also work against you. When mobbing, the act of controlling mobs so that they move in sync and attack at once, you'll want their attacks to be executed at the exact same time. However, when mobs are clumped together, sometimes you may find that their attacks are desyncing due to blocking. This is because if you clump up too many mobs together, the back line of mobs may be blocked from attacking due to you being outside of their attack range. Unlike the Terror Beak example, desyncing their attacks will make kiting harder. When this happens, you can utilize stalling to allow the mobs to catch up, or you can also utilize pushing. Pushing is exactly what it sounds like. Similar to blocking, it's a collision-based technique that allows you to control mobs. Pushing goes two ways. If it's a small mob, your character can push them away. If it's a large mob, your character will be pushed away by them. Regardless, all the characters and mobs involved will be pushing each other, clumping up, and staying in attack range. If some enemies aren't attacking due to being blocked, you can slowly push the mobs by walking into them while they're in attack delay. Push them to clump them together better. Don't attack, and walk out. Then reset all of their attack delays by avoiding their attack range until all of their delays are over. Once all the mobs are set up in a neat clump and they're in attack range, you'll be good to go. If you have too many mobs to control, then you should probably consider dropping a couple of them. However, you can use pushing in a different way. Instead of using it as a method to control the mob and reset the fight, you can actively push every time you kite back and forth. This means by the time that the back line attacks, the front line will already be in attack delay, 
This means that you won't be able to get in as many attacks as you normally would, but the mobs will be attacking at a relatively similar pace, so it is still a bit more manageable. Of course, like every other technique in the game, it's possible to utilize these collision-based techniques for a variety of different mobs and situations. This becomes a matter of experience. Once you know how to do it, you'll eventually find situations where it's beneficial to do so. Most topics in Don't Starve require cumulative understanding to master. Mobbing, leashing, stalling, blocking, and pushing, some of these techniques you may already be utilizing, whether consciously or not. But eventually, putting them all together into your repertoire is your ultimate goal. Once you learn how mobs behave and how to manipulate them, you'll be able to take down any enemy with ease. For more tutorials on combat and other topics, you can click the middle of the screen or check the description below. But for now, thanks for watching, and don't starve.